Video game developer Patrice Desile was talking at Reboot Develop Red Conference about why his game Ancestors the Humankind Odyssey didn't review so well. Interestingly, he said that people's expectations were too high to begin with and even went so far as accusing some reviewers of not even playing his game. Here to discuss it with me is Mr. Henry, one year older, one year wiser, Cooper. One year older, one year slower, one year duller, but let's do it. Let's see if I still got it. So in case you don't know, Ancestors The Humankind Odyssey was released back in August on the 27th for PC and it's coming to consoles later this week on Friday, December the 6th. And Mr. Desilet was formerly of Ubisoft and is now working for himself at his own indie studio called Panache Digital Games, which is based in Montreal. Now the source for all of this information is a GamesIndustry.biz article and they attended Reboot Develop Red, uh, which is where this conference was all happening. It's a bunch of different developers and media people talking talking about gaming stuff. And he says some interesting things about the game's expectations given his personal resume or, or CV of, of games that he's released himself because he's worked on the Assassin's Creed franchise and Ubisoft stuff. So he said, I'm used to having bigger numbers than that, so that's the elephant in the room. And he's talking about Metacritic scores and review scores and stuff like that. But people expected my studio of 35 people to ship a game that's really close to Assassin's Creed and it's just not possible. We made some harsh decisions in order to ship the game and we wanted it to be different. So we're talking about Assassin's Creed there. He personally personally worked on Assassin's Creed 1, 2, and Brotherhood. And they averaged between 80 and 90 between them yeah. on Metacritic across various platforms. So they're all pretty well-reviewed and classic games now. Yeah, interestingly. He was the creative director of the original Assassin's Creed. So he was the catalyst that sparked that whole franchise for Ubisoft. Yeah, and where would Ubisoft be without Assassin's Creed? Because all of their games since have been Assassin's Creed, yeah. whether or not that's on the box. Interestingly, Ancestors currently sits at 64 on Metacritic, so that's obviously a lot lower and he has some accusations for why that is the case. He's not, not too keen on some of what the, some journalists have said. So he said, we know for a fact that some reviewers didn't actually play the game. And now uh, I see it in YouTube comments all the time, like, oh, journalists, just play the game. You haven't actually played the game. <laughs> he's been on YouTube. He's been reading Yeah, he has. Maybe yeah. it's that Patrick's Desolé writing them comments. Maybe it is on every video. <laughs> it's part of our industry. They have to review games and they have 15 of them to review in one week and sometimes they don't have time. And since Ancestors is so different. Some of them went, ugh, I don't have time for this. And we know for a fact that some just invented elements in the game. Like, there is no fire and you cannot ride any horses. Even though one reviewer said, oh, it wasn't that great when you ride a horse. Yes, my people are pissed, by the way. This is some pretty strong language from a game developer. Not the kind of which you normally associate with uh, people who are making games. Obviously, he set up, this is his studio. He set it up in 2014 and he's working for himself now. He doesn't have a boss. He is his own boss. He can say what, he's, what he likes and here he seems to be shooting from the hip that's for sure and I like this there should be a little bit of friction between journalists and creators in any medium because then it forces each other to be the best if you're just appeasing journalists or if you're just appeasing game devs you're not really getting a real conversation going and he is bringing up the question of reviewer integrity because you know we discuss it on this channel quite often that reviewers for these outlets do get rushed to review the games and it may lead to them maybe wanting needing to cut court Corners to in order to fulfill their uh, deadlines and to hit those deadlines. Um, it, it's something that's worthy of discussion, maybe not for this video, but that's for sure. Let's talk specifically about his accusations. Who were these dodgy reviewers who claimed that fires were in the game and rideable horses were a thing? Well, we did some digging on the issue of the reviewer claiming that fires are in the game when they're not. Outlet MS Power User was the was the yep. culprit here, and the original review said that crafting fires was boring. I never realised how boring this game is. Uh, they scored it a 7 at the time, but they have since updated the, their review with a correction, and it now reads the following. Our review of Ancestors provided a small aside statement that the... A small aside statement, so get that yeah. get that straight. It wasn't, it was a, only, big it wasn't a huge statement, it's just a small aside statement. Yeah. That the act of building fires was a mundane activity. Since the publishing of this article, it has come to light that the act of crafting a fire is not something the player can do. The statement has since been retracted. No, no wonder it's mundane, you can't fucking do it. <laughs> so boring. This gameplay's it's not, not engaging, engaging because I'm not actually doing it. Engaging in it, yeah. Our, our reviewer accidentally wrote building fires was a mundane activity. He meant building resting spots. It's a small slip up. 
<laughs> oh, brilliant. But one we would like to humbly apologize for. This doesn't sound very humble. It sounds very... Oh, it's just a small slip-up. He did it by accident. It was a small slip-up, and it was a small aside statement. That doesn't sound humble at all. We we promise, like, yeah, we, we made a mistake, but it's only like a little mistake. I mean, who even cares? <laughs> they carried on. We would never mean to misrepresent a title, not only for the respect of our readers, but for the respect of the hard-working teams that create such intricate and amazing titles. We would like to formally apologise to the team behind Ancestors and the game's creator, Patrice Desile. Now, this is a game that came out back in August, so several months ago, and they've only just corrected this. Yeah, it's good timing that, isn't it? Yeah, uh, just as soon as they're called out. It's like, <laughs> okay, well, yeah, we, we, we realised it was a mistake, only a small mistake, but yeah. we, we'll fix it. I mean, maybe what they're saying here does follow through. Maybe it was it was right that they just made a slip of it. It wasn't campfires. It wasn't fires, it was just camp. It was, you know, they, and they got that mixed up, and yeah. they said, these guys are supposed to write words for a living. They get the words wrong. It's a big deal. So maybe it was just a minor boo-boo. However, Patrice de Sile knows for a fact or that they didn't fact. play it. A fact they didn't play it. So, I mean, ugh, we can't tell for certain who's who's lying and who's not. I guess the jury is still out on that one. Let us know if this reviewer was lying or not, or what you think of that down in the comments. Whether this is an important thing to note for all reviewers, whether or not you're a professional outlet, you know, for a big establishment, media thing or just a guy on YouTube. Make sure you know what you're talking about and you're accurate. I mean, at times, opinion will come into a review. Fundamentally, that's always going to happen. But you can't state things that I are just wrong. Facts, right? I, mean, yeah. Yeah. I reviewed this review a 2 out of 10. Wouldn't read again. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't do it. <laughs> so the next accusation was that rideable horses were a bit boring or something. Funny enough, there is a horse in the game and you can see it now on the footage we're showing you on the screen. And credit to nooblets.com for this footage. We tried to find the review that they were talking talking about where it stated you could ride them and we couldn't find it. You can jump on the back of them as you can see on the screen you can kill them but you can't ride them um, so we couldn't find it and neither could the six axis who st state obviously the internet is f in full swing trying to work out who said such things and so far has come up with blank other than this video which shows an ape straddling a horse. I have checked the 40 lowest scoring reviews of the game and only one mentions a horse but nothing about riding them so that's a lot of reviews. I couldn't go through 40 reviews I, I googled a lot, I, I came up with this six axis uh, quote. I, I didn't have the patience to go through 40 reviews but they went through 40, they couldn't find it. My only theory on this is maybe Patrice Desole got confused between his own game and the game called Kingdom Come Deliverance because, hear me out, that game has an equally unnecessarily long name <laughs> and you ride horses in it. I mean that that could be it because Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey, it's just way too long. Just call it Ancestors Odyssey or Humankind Odyssey or just The Odyssey ancestors. or something like that. Like, ancestors or just Ancestors or Human any one of those words will do just fine <laughs> instead of all of them together. Now, uh, talking about development pressures and having to make uh, concessions and compromises to get the game shipped, one of the big issues that reviewers were bringing up is summed up quite nicely by a guy called Patrick Klepik in his review, which was published in Vice. About an hour into playing Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey, I set the controller down, stared at the screen and screamed, What the fuck do you want me to do? What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? Patrice Desolet is seeming to address this specific criticism at Reboot, saying, We shipped the game and we left 72 pop-up tutorial messages on the floor. We couldn't do it. They're coming now for the console version. They will be in. It will be easier. But we didn't have time. You need to eventually say, at the end of the day, that you have to ship. And that's more important than anything else. So this is a huge question of compromising what you want to do for your, your creation, your, your art, for just a simple business decision of, I have a deadline. I have to get this out and it's unfortunate that that is the case because obviously this has been a problem for a lot of reviewers and tutorials would have made the game more enjoyable because a lot of people said that, that it doesn't explain itself yeah. because um, you've got to learn all of your skills before you can do anything you have to you, you don't know to put a rock with this stick to make something you just have to kind of experiment and if it had tutorials that would be easier and you could understand okay this is what the game wants me to do however he also sort of said how they didn't want to hold your hands they didn't want to give you too many tutorials because they wanted you to really experience life as you know early 
man, primitive man, learning it the way your ancestors did. So even that's a tricky line to walk. Yeah, it's interesting because um, the whole pitch of the game I remember going in was that, you know, it's not going to hold your hand the whole time. And maybe this is just a little bit of uh, an excuse from Pat Des, as I like to call him, because I can't be arsed saying this for yeah. him. Uh, saying that he left the tutorials on the floor. Oh, it would have been better if, uh, if I'd have put the tutorials in. Like I said, he said all along that it was going to be difficult. I yeah. mean, if he was, was intended to put the tutorials in, he didn't make reference to them. Uh, I don't know. It's just a little bit of an inconsistency there with me, which makes me question it. However, at the end of the Games Industry article, Patrice Desilet said that his next game will be 1666 Amsterdam. Now, this is an interesting story in itself mm. because if those of you don't know, I'm going to fill you in a little bit here. So Patrice Desilet left Ubisoft in 2010 looking for more creative independence, as he said at the time. He joined uh, THQ as creative director in 2011 in Montreal. He spent two years there working on a new project called 1666 Amsterdam, and he led a team of close to 50 people. However, THQ declared bankruptcy in the United States in December 2012 and January 2013, and then THQ Montreal was sold off to Ubisoft in an auction. Unlucky Pat Des. They're dragging him back. <laughs> So, funnily enough, he was then laid off by Ubisoft in 2013 in May because he they couldn't agree contact terms was the official announcement. However, Desilet said at the time, contrary to any statements made earlier today, this morning, I was terminated by Ubisoft. Hasta la vista. Baby. I was notified of this termination in person, handed a termination notice and was unceremoniously escorted out of the building by two guards without being able to say goodbye to my team or collect my personal belongings. This was not my decision. Ubisoft's actions are baseless and without merit. I intend to fight Ubisoft vigorously for my rights, my team and for my game. And that he did because yeah. following that, Patrice Desilet and Ubisoft came to an agreement in April 2016 in which Desilet won back all creative rights to the game 16 66 Amsterdam which he was working on at THQ and he now owns as creative director of Panache Games the company he set up the year after he left Ubisoft for the second time yeah it's an interesting thing in uh, American like corporate law is that if you work for a company and then have an idea it completely independent of the company you're gonna do it on your own thing even if you're a small business gonna sell cupcakes technically it can be argued in court that the company you work for own that idea and then also own all of the profits from that <laughs> cupcake business it's a real Really weird little it's the same in this thing. Country. Yeah, but I think they're more kind of on it because yeah. suing is a huge part of American culture. That's true. Um, but Patrice Desilet explained in the Ruby Developed Conference recently, I almost lost my house over it. I'm not joking. I fought for it. I said, no, you won't have my game. And I got it back. What's great is that it's not the game after Assassin's Creed Brotherhood anymore. It's the game after Ancestors. It's the game not made with THQ Montreal. It's the game made by Panache. So this is a good, it's an excellent back story. It's the guy who took on Ubisoft and won. So he, uh, he gave Ubisoft a black eye over this game. Let's just hope that he can do it justice, uh, justice and deliver on this game better than Humankind Odyssey, let's yeah. see. Yeah, and we don't really know anything about this game other than it's set in Amsterdam in 1666 and then there's some stuff about the devil and quotes of him saying, I want to do a game about the devil and I like Amsterdam, but I don't like horror movies, so this is going to be an interesting challenge for me. I'm like, well, what are you doing <laughs> it for? Well, anyway, that's just the end of our conversation about journalistic integrity and whether or not reviewers are actually playing the games and the future of one of the games industry's biggest icons at the moment, Patrice Desilet. Make sure to let us know down in the comments, do you think these reviewers are all the same? They're all fake gamers who never play games and they need to start playing them properly. Do you even listen to, real, to traditional reviewers or do you just focus on independent YouTubers and whatnot? And do you even care about what Mr. Desilet even says? Have you ever heard of him before? Make sure to let us know. Go ahead, leave a like, hit subscribe and of course the bell. Go on over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good game to support the content we create. I've been Henry, he's been Gaz. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.